Hello and welcome back to the shop. So today I am continuing on with the trap build. Now we're not going to put anything together and we're not going to make anything. But what I do want to do today is go over all the real world parts that are used on the movie prop. I've gathered them all here except for a few that I haven't gotten yet which I will point out. And uh, I want to go through exactly what they are, where they go, and the parts numbers, the real world parts numbers so you guys can look them up. Now if you go down below in the description, there will be a text, a link to a text file that will give you basically a text printout here that I made up of all the real world part numbers. There are a few caveats to that uh, in regards to the ribbon cable and things like that, but we'll get to that when we get there. Okay, so full disclosure, everything that I'm going to show you besides one, two, three, four, five, five things. I tracked down on the internet and actually through a local electronics supplier, uh, You Do It Electronics, awesome place if you guys live in Massachusetts, Eastern Mass, cool place to go. I tracked down all that stuff and bought it myself from various places on the internet, anything from eBay to industrial vendors and actually the aluminum came from metal supermarkets. So down in the description you're also going to find a link to Sean Charlesworth's Etsy page who was the man who dis designed this trap and allowed us to build it. He sells electronics kits, he also sells aesthetic upgrades which is basically just all the real world parts for the trap. He sells them in different kits and he also sells one giant kit that has all the aesthetic parts to it plus I believe all of the hardware, the screws and everything else for $205. And he also sells this knob that I made for $15. So you can get basically a movie accurate trap for 200 and 220 bucks with all the parts obviously minus the printing. I would love to say that I beat him out by 50 bucks, 75 bucks, but I'll be honest with you, I maybe 15, 20 bucks less than what he is for his for everything and I still don't have the bearings at, to use as wheels that's included in his kit. I don't have the top insert on uh, his kit which is covers the LED lights as a purple insert with a mesh, mesh backing on top of that and the metal handle. I don't have those yet and so we're on par Cost wise, we're, we're, we're right there. We're pretty much on par. The only difference I can say is that in his kit, the side panels are plastic. They're aluminized plastic. They look really nice, but they are plastic. And I'm going to be making mine out of this 16 gauge aluminum. And this piece of aluminum cost me like $22 or so from Metal Supermarket. So that added to my cost. And you can see. It's way bigger than I need, but I just got this just in case for other projects and also in case I really screw up. So, I mean, you guys can take it or leave it whether you want to try to track down all these spots yourself or buy it from Sean. I'll be honest with you, if I were to do it again, I would probably talk to Sean and get a kit minus maybe the side plates and things like that. It'd probably be just, just as much uh, as trying to find these things yourselves and honestly a lot less hassle because some of this stuff is hard to track down. I do have to say in his kit there are two things that he's missing and there are two things that are really hard to track down and two things that I don't have yet but uh, I'm going to. So why don't we come in on the bench here and I'll show you some pictures of the actual trap and the parts and give you some parts numbers and some info on all of that. Alright before we get into all the parts I just want to show you um, I've been painting some of the 3D printed parts. You can see the inside there. You can kind of see some of the striations and stuff in there. That is because this is going to be on the inside. I just gave a quick spray paint of that. So the way I got this finish was to fill in all those marks with some Bondo glazing putty. Let that dry. Sand it smooth. Use some nice gap filling sandable primer and then a couple of coats of black paint. Uh, we don't have to be perfect with it because this is going to be weathered which I'm going to show you how to do. And you can kind of see in some parts, maybe you can see reflections in that petal, you can kind of still see some of the printing marks but they're very very faint and all this is going to be either hidden or blended in with some washes and other things. 
also all of this was printed with Hatchbox PLA. Uh, if you go down into the comments down below, there's the profile settings I used for Cura and obviously I used my CR10S to print all of these and I had no issues with that. So all the pictures that I'm going to be showing you here are pictures of actual screen used props. Uh, these pictures came from an auction website when they sold one of these and there are a couple of differences between the movies and a couple of differences between traps themselves and we'll kind of point a few of those out. So what I want to show you first is here is a picture of a Ghostbusters 1 trap. This is one of the ones that they used uh, in the scenes that was able to detach this inside one, like when they were putting everything into the containment system. So I just want to point out one thing here. This here, these two bars that you see here are red on the Ghostbusters 1 trap. On the Ghostbusters 2 trap, they are silver. I like the red ones better, so we're going to be using that. The front knobs here, these are all included in the printed files, and I'm using the 3D printed ones. These are kind of unknown, or they are known, they can get kind of close. I, some people said they were from Heath Kits, some people, there, there are all kinds of knobs that are really close, but we're just going to be using the 3D printed ones. Also, this one is known. This one here is a Raytheon teardrop pointer, and the number I found for it was MS91528-1K2B, but that's only going to be for this teardrop shape here. This skirt is separate and usually missing the skirt, so we're just using the 3D printed parts for that. And you can also see here's the aluminum plates we're going to be cutting. Okay, so the Ghostbusters 2 trap here, that knurled knob that we made is this knob right here. On the Ghostbusters 1 trap, this knob is plastic, so it depends on what you want to do. Alright, so let's go here. So this guy right here is a Kalar resistor. It's an MC250. It's out of production, but you can still find them. Uh, to, find, to buy, I bought these off of eBay. I had to buy a package of five of them. This thinned plate right here is a vector plate. This is from Vector Electronics. It's called a frame lock rail. The number on this is SR3-06.50-S. Now that's bigger than this. It's like three and a half inches. What they did was they cut it down to fit on the side. Now, you might see this labeled in different places as an SR2 size. And that is true for the stunt traps only. On the, on the hero traps, it was a cut down piece of the SR3 and you can tell by the outside ribs. This guy right here is a toggle switch, just a single pole double throw toggle switch, and it has that flat profile there. Now, I couldn't find a number for this, so I just found one that looked the same, and this looks pretty damn close. So you can see there. And the number on this is actually right in here. I haven't added it to the um, to the list yet, but I will. Uh, Jameco Value Pro 1MS3 T6B11M1. I had to buy three of these. I think I got them on, off of Amazon. This light right here on the top of the trap, this right here is a Linrose B4611B1 that is no longer in production. That was a pilot light. Now this is one of the parts that I bought from Sean. So he has a nice replica of that right here. Okay, you see that's a pretty much an exact replica. And I think the original one was either 12 or 24 volts, but obviously you can set any kind of LED you want in that if you plan on electrifying your trap. So this right here 
and this guy here are what connect the trap to the trap pedal. And what that is, is these. So, this, this one right here would be this right here. And here would be your other coupler. And that would be connected to a piece of split loom cable. So what these are, this one here is a Foster hose coupler. It's a number 22-2B, or I've also seen it labeled as B22-2. This, it's gonna be eighth inch NPT by the male coupler deal. And then this one here is the uh, another Foster coupler fitting. That's eighth inch barb by the female coupler there. And this is a 2202 and they fit together. When we do the electronics, this will actually end up being our electrical connection that will be doing our trap activation when we touch the pedal. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the trap pedal itself. This right here, holding the red hose, is a Nicoil banjo fitting. The part number on this is 55020 or 50-55020. I've seen it labeled both ways. This particular style is out of production. That, that part number may pop up a plastic one. This is basically the part that we made because I couldn't find. Now underneath this, where you can't see it, there's another fitting that connects a yellow hose. That fitting is this one here that we had to modify. This is an Alcon AQ68-P-2X2. This is 8th inch NPT by 8th inch hose. Now the hose we're using is 532nd hose, which is why I had to drill this out. The hose itself is a red and yellow, red and yellow plastic airline hose. Now that I also bought from Sean because I didn't need 9,000 feet of it. So I just bought those from him. Those are them there. This right here is just a piece of ducting that's going to end up holding our switch and holds the pedal vector plate. That I also bought from Sean because again, I didn't need 9,000 feet of it. This little light right here, I couldn't find any part numbers on it. And is also the last part that I bought from Sean. And he has a pretty damn close replica of it right here. So it just clips there, yeah, clips right into a drilled hole. Um, it looks to me, judging by this picture, maybe slightly taller and a little bit skinnier, but it's pretty damn close to that and will will pass. This aluminum piece right here is another piece of that vector plate. It's the same size as the other one. The only difference, the only thing is, is there should be another rib right here and here. They cut those off. And you can see at this picture here, the way they did the, the side of the trap, that one that I showed you earlier, the way they did this piece here was basically just mill off and delete a section of it and that's how they made that this right here is the other end of where the hose is going to be connected so it's another set of those airline fittings this right here is going to be a Hammond black aluminum project box 1590A, 1590A. It's going to be that guy there. Uh, ABK is aluminum black. Okay, that's all that ABK means. Connected to that right here is going to be just a regular D sub connector, a gray D sub connector. There's one right there. There's some part numbers there if you want them.
So this right here, this connector right here is connected to the D sub connector is a 20 pin ribbon cable connector with a 20 pin ribbon cable with a red wire on the outside which goes to a 20 pin card edge connector. Sometimes there's another connector here like I think I forget what it's called. Um, this whole section of ribbon cable varies between Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2 and it also varies between traps. Some of them have another connector here, some of them don't. So depending on which model you want to make depends on which kind of cable you can buy. This right here, this big box right here, is another Hammond project, project box. This is a 1591L. And SBK, it says SBK because it's um, plastic and it's black, so it's a plastic box. And then also, lastly, this guy right here is an Armoron. You got it right here. Armoron PL11 socket, which is this guy right here. Okay. And this holds a relay. Now the original relay was an ITT RM833212 three pole double pole three pole double throw 11 pin socket uh, socket mount relay but that's out of production so the one I used is this which it kind of looks the same so let me kind of I got a picture of it right here. They look very similar. They're not quite the same, but they look similar enough to pass. And that basically just plugs into this connector and sits on top of that box. Okay, so I just want to do a quick overview, just showing you the parts that we're going to be using so you guys can pick them up. Uh, like, the one thing that I don't have is that, is the ribbon cable on the back, which is easy enough to get, and also the vector plate, which I'm working on getting. And as far as Sean and everything goes, the two things that he does not have is that vector plate, and then also this banjo fitting that we made and also this uh, Alcon push fitting which are the two pieces that the hoses connect to. Those three things are the only thing on his website that he does not sell. Um, these little Alcon guys I was able to find relatively easily like I said we had to modify it and these guys are super rare these banjo fittings you're gonna have to make one or buy a reproduction one which uh, you can get from gbfans.com or you can make your own uh, whatever you guys prefer to do so the next video up will probably be making the aluminum side plates out of this aluminum sheet and then we can go on and do a little bit of uh, weathering and some assembly so that is the plan so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I just wanted to give you a heads up of the parts that we're using and maybe where to get them or where to find some parts numbers. So again, everything's down in the description. There's a link to the text file of all the parts numbers that I found. There is also a link to Sean's Etsy store and there is also a link to my Cura profile that he used to print everything with. Again, one last little warning is that ribbon cable stuff on the back is very dependent on uh, basically how you want the trap to look, what you're doing with it. So do a little bit of research on that. Some of the fittings you need, uh, some of them you don't. Also, the I think the ribbon cable for the Ghostbusters 2 traps is 20 pin, but I think the Ghostbusters 1 traps is 26 pin. Uh, they, they change between movies. So just do a little bit of research and uh, check that out. It shouldn't be too hard for you to find. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we will see you on the next one.